What is going on everyone and happy Friday. We are now live. Um, we're going to basically be going into the market close for the next like half hour or so and then I'm going to go a little bit deeper I guess into the after hours and we'll talk about some stuff for next week. Kind of a precursor into next week because um, this week, I mean, past couple of days, right, we're seeing an overall dip in the S&P. Let's pull up the S&P actually. As, well, look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin hitting over 55,000, which is kind of crazy, but I'm going to pull up the S&P. NEPT does look good. I'm going to take a peek at that in a second here. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we're like almost even on the day, um, at least as of right now. We'll see how we close up. You know, if we push up into the close, maybe close barely green on the S&P, but kind of in a consolidation period. Maybe we'll see a push up towards new all-time highs into next week. We'll see what happens, I guess. I mean, I haven't been following, honestly, personally, about the whole stimulus deal and what's going on with that. I would think, you know, maybe we get a little push once that comes out, you know, once we get the official word on that, maybe that helps you know, push things up. And then after that, maybe we can see some bigger downside dips. Maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Um, ultimately, right, we're just going off what's in front of us. So we're pretty much even, though, on the S&P right now. Um, how are we looking right now in the five-minute Actually, we're down a little bit more, coming back a little bit into the close. So we'll see if we finish green here. But, you know, just about even the past couple of days, kind of boring in terms of the overall market. But there's been a lot of action underneath. So we'll dive into a bunch of that stuff. Let's take a peek at NEPT, one of those cannabis plays. Wow, this actually did very well. I was looking at it, but I was looking at it after it started spiking. So I was looking at it in the mid 180s. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to wait for a dip or I'm just going to pass on it for right now. Um, but I still like that that dip. Um, you know, look at this bounce. Beautiful bounce in the daily here. So came down close to that well, 150 or so would have been my support level. Came below the 50 SMA, but um, they had earnings, I believe, and they did an offering. So it was kind of like a double whammy. So, you know, they have a lot of room to the upside. Offering, I think, closes soon. Um, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, I'll dive through a bunch of stuff that I'm looking at, what I bought today, and then we'll, you know, we'll go into the close here. So um, Bitcoin 55K. Yep, it's back. Look at this thing. Look at this. It's just nuts. This thing is just on a massive tear. So I think, I mean, Bitcoin plays have been kind of weird. They've been kind of up and down the past couple of days. It's, 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 I mean, I don't know, not perfect correlations. You know, you're looking at Bitcoin. Look at the five minute on Bitcoin, right? So here's Bitcoin's chart on the five minute. And then if you were to go to a stock like, for example, where's MARA? Mara, right? This guy is just, if you go to the five minute of Mara, I mean, it's not even remotely close to the same, you know, look that the five minute of Bitcoin itself. So they're not correlating perfectly, but you know, they never. It's not going to be perfect. Um, I cut POLA yesterday, right? Because it fell below 15. Meanwhile, it comes back up and once it's 17 this morning. So I could have held it overnight um, and actually got a for a better exit. I'm gonna watch this one for a little bit. It may try to kind of hold up in this area, this 15-ish area. And if it holds 15 pretty well, I'll take another stab at it. 50 SMA is pushing up. Um, I just cut that one for now to move on. I wanted to clear, kind of have a clean slate going into um, the weekend and keep it as simple as possible. Don't want to have too, too many plays. Um, yeah, DPW, I'm, I'm in DPW. Um, I, I sold some on the pop because it hit up to eight. And then I looked, actually, I rebought some shares. Not that much, but I rebought some shares. Where's DPW? I don't have that much. Um, I have, uh, yeah, I have an average of 567. So I think if it holds up around 640 or so, that's a good sign. But it's going to close. It looks like it's going to close green on the day. So DPW looks pretty good. You know, we'll see what happens. Um, Elon tweeted a Bitcoin. Pro <laughs> of course. Um, oil. Look at oil. Let's take a peek at oil. What is USO up to? I like, I still think the oil plays are going to go. Um, I think there's going to be a lot, of, a lot of push on some of these oil plays. So we'll see. We will see. I mean, I have a few. One of the ones I like the most right now is USEG. Um, because it has come down after an offering and it's holding up roughly around this five in the mid fives, holding up in the low to mid fives. So it's doing well. Um, liked your video from last night. Awesome. Appreciate it. Appreciate that. Um, what, what I, wanted, I figured I would just do this now. I didn't really have like a, I'm going to do, I want to do some more like, um, I guess tutorial style stuff on different types of questions people that people have been asking. So I want to do some of that going forward next week, but I figured, because it's kind of been a weird week, I figured just go live here into the close and into the beginning of after hours um, so we can kind of see how things finish up and then what I'm liking. So let's go down to, 
Where is my positions? So what are the things I bought today? AIKI is one that I bought today. Came down, they just did an offering. I think the offering closed at $1.60 and it's just above that. So AIKI, I have a floor here of 150. Don't really want, it could come down to like 145, you know, and I'll give it a little bit of leeway, leeway. but I don't want to see AIKI coming down much more than 150 and holding below that level. So AIKI I'm buying, I'm looking for a $2 plus target. So I have a decent chunk. Uh, I bought like a starter there for AIKI and we'll see. Um, how that plays out. I'll add to it next week if it's still sitting here. Um, HEPA is another one I bought as well. Similar setup here. Um, they just had some insider buying on HEPA. Actually, you know what? Let me just take a peek. Let's pull it up. Um, and I'll show you guys the HEPA insider buys. So if this is looking at finviz.com. And so last time I played HEPA, it was back in early December when they did, they did the offering, I believe. And then they had some insider buys. And the thing pushed up from the 150-ish area, the mid ones, up towards over 250. Now, I think I sold it like over 225 was my last bet. I was scaling out on the way up um, and I was riding it up. And so I'm thinking a similar situation here for HEPA. Offering dips have been good. I see a $2 floor. So I'm looking to play HEPA. I'm giving it some decent leeway to the downside. I will continue to buy HEPA until it comes down to two. And then after it falls below two, that's where I'll probably cut it for a loss. That's just kind of how I'm going to, how I identify the trade. And that's one of those things too that I was that I wanted to talk about as well. Um, when I enter a stock like this, the the first thought that I look at for like I don't actually think about this. Like I'm not looking to the upside. I look at, I do that second. The first thought is chart wise. Okay, where is it sitting? Where support? So I drew this line in immediately right here at two bucks, roughly two bucks, and I said okay. If the stock is sitting in the mid two thirties, that gives me like a thirty five cent downside risk. Am I willing to hold for a 35 cent downside risk on a $2 stock? Yeah, I can do that. That matches a fair risk reward or that, that that's a fair you know risk. I, I'm willing to take that risk. And then let's look to the upside. Do we see more than 30 cents of the upside? Yeah, obviously we can see this 30 cent. The first move would be about 40 cents or so from where it's at. So we see more than that right there. But that said, I can still see this thing going over three bucks as we had some strong momentum prior to the offering. So that said, I see a lot more reward here than the risk. I'm willing to take that. Meanwhile, we also have the 50 SMA where it held up pretty well, which is sitting at 220. So we actually may never come down towards two. So realistically, the risk reward here, it could be more like 15 cents downside. And you're talking about potentially 75 cents upside even more, right? So that's a solid risk reward. That's what I look at when I, when I talk risk reward when I enter a trade. So these are some new ones. I'll definitely talk about them in tomorrow's video for sure. Um, was AIKI, two different offering balances that had some significant strength that we're looking for dip buys. So, you know, we're being a little more selective on some of these things, um, you know, for sure. Um, let's see. Yeah, the whole Texas situation, I think, is messing with oil. So I think we'll, we'll get past that. I mean, I'm currently living in Austin, Texas. We've had, it's, been, it's been a mess. But I think we'll get past that. HUSA, I bought some of the dip there. I have a decently low average because I was playing it here. I was, I was, what I'm doing for, for HUSA um, is I'm selling this thing over three, and then I am buying this thing on dips. So we're seeing a significant dip. I'm buying it down here. Yeah, could this thing come back down to two bucks? Yeah, if oil crashes, yeah. That's always a risk, right? But I still like the momentum in oil. And I think oil is going to take its time to slowly recover. And we're going to see a lot of these oil plays start to just really pop. And one by one, they're kind of going. So as we're speaking, right, CEI was yesterday. Look at CEI. Now, this is one that you could have not, you could potentially look for a dip. Now, I, I played it. I sold it up around three bucks. So I'm not going to get too greedy here. I'm going to move on to the next one. But CEI is another oil play that you can play as well. And they even, even uh, where is it? PED. I just saw PED pop up somewhere. Um, let's pull up PED. These are not like the perfect bottom setups I like. PED is actually looking pretty good. I mean, PED is kind of, you know, holding support here up around 175 or, or so up in the upper ones. Um, and so we'd like to see this one make it pop back up over two bucks. And it has that spike potential. So it's a similar setup. If we take a look, we can even draw on a trend line on PED, you know, roughly, you know, something like this. It's not, you know, not too shabby, you know, roughly holding that, you know, that trend. If you crack below and hold a day or two below that line, that's your signal to get out. So um, do I buy the dip on CRCH? I know people are playing this one for the merger, right, with Meta, I believe. Um, this actually isn't a bad spot because we have this gap from this just under three up towards four. So this was that, this, this gap is what happened in the pre-market or after hours um, a couple days back. And now we're coming right back down pretty hard the past couple of days, which is fine. So if you missed this move, right, and you like this as a merger play, 
Well, then yeah, this is not a bad spot. I would say this isn't a terrible spot around three bucks. Understand, I would be looking at, okay, maybe this thing comes back down towards 225. So we have a lot more downside risk. Um, but if you do like the, the, the idea behind the merger, um, then there's that. I mean, personally for me, I'm not looking to catch this one right here if it came down. I was watching it last week. I missed, here's what I missed last week. I'll show you guys. So here's what I did. I was watching it right here as it came down and, and it pushed up a, a few days ago, a few days back. Then it held up and was holding this line. So I drew this line in here at this 225. And I, as I drew that line in, you know, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll look at that one again in a, in a little bit. And then it was like midday. I didn't think we'd get a move midday. I thought maybe in the after hours you get a move. And it started pushing up in the after hours. So from 225 within the same day, the thing went to nearly four bucks, you know, which is kind of crazy. So I didn't take that that trade, but I was I was looking at it. So if it comes back down to that level, it's not a bad spot, but you're seeing a pretty decent dip right now. So I would say it's not a terrible idea. Um, what else did I look at this week that I bought more of? Um, let's see, we talked about AIKI, which we have the offering. We have HEPA was a recent one as well. We'll talk about this in tomorrow's video for sure. Um, ATIF was one I grabbed at 140 yesterday on a dip. I think this is pushing up. It's pushing up really nice. I put this on a lot. Very similar chart setup that we're seeing with a lot of like even oil stocks similar, uh, a very similar setup. So I do like this one. I think it's going to make a nice little push back up potentially towards two bucks where I'm looking for the target um, on that one. Yeah, tons of, you know, that's still a ways away, but the momentum is there, it seems like, um, and a fairly low float China stock as well. So there's that. Outside of that, that's really it for what I want to you know mention in terms of new stuff. Um, USCG is not a terrible, you know, ad zone, I, I would say, as of right now. Well, I'm looking for this one to hopefully... Hopefully is not a good word to use, but I'm looking for it to you know hold five bucks or so would be where I would like to see it. So you know we're, we're sitting in the low fives. I think it's still a decent spot um, if you want it. Solo too low. Solo's uh, getting interesting. I I'm giving it to seven bucks. Um, you could play it a couple different ways. Here's my thoughts on solo. So yeah, the 50 SMA balance may not perfectly work out here. I'm giving it a couple days. Um, I have a decently low average, so I'm not super worried about it. And I could still add to my position plenty if I wanted to. I'm still not going in huge. My 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 max size is 10% of my account. But I'm still probably playing with about you know one fourth to a half of a max size on most of my positions. Um, some 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 of them even less. I, I knew you guys will see that in tomorrow's video where I'll show you everything that I'm in. Um, and so when I, when I do that, you know, that just because I'm in something doesn't mean that you know that's a good play. Many times what I have is I might be in 15 positions or something like that at a time, which I never like to do. But many of them are in the scale out phase where like I'm already up quite a bit. And I'm just looking to take some more profits to see if it, if it keeps pushing on up, um, which I think it has potential. For example, like APRE, I'm mostly out. I sold, I was buying this thing, I had a 525 average, and then I sold most of it up over eight bucks. I was mostly out, but there's plenty of range on this chart. So I'm letting the last 100 shares ride as kind of like lottery money. So if the thing goes up to 10 plus dollars, yeah, I make a couple extra hundred bucks and I move on to the next one and that's where I'll take those last shares off. So yeah, like that's kind of how I play some of the ones that I'm already in that I'm up fairly nicely on. Um, same with ELYS. I like this one to hit 10. I want to hit 10 bucks on it, but I mean, I was in from 586. The thing hit over eight bucks. You know, if I didn't take any, if I, I'd be stupid to not take profits up $3 per share in like a two. It's like, it's like I bought it and the next day it was up that much. So you know, I'm not I'm not going to be stupid and not take any profits because you don't take profits, you're not paying yourself at the end of the day, right? So that's how I how I scale out of some of these things. Um, SOS, I mean, with Bitcoin pushing up, let's take a peek what SOS is up to. Um, it's kind of in a weird spot. I got a lot of lines in here. Don't don't get too caught up in the lines. Um, I did it for a different video on the second channel, which is should be linked below if you guys want to check out the second channel. Um, so I, I see a 10 bucks holding up for right now. So it's, it's in this range. I would like to see, you know, where if, it, if, if 10 bucks can't hold, then I would like to see 885 or so hold. And if that can't hold, then maybe come down towards 775. So those are some areas to watch, but I think we're going to probably get a nice gap up. It looks like in, you know, in Bitcoin over the weekend, Bitcoin's very strong into the, we're actually probably going to push a new high of the day on Bitcoin by the end of the day here. So I think all the Bitcoin plays that aren't, you know, as high as they were a few days back, I think they may gap up come Monday. So what I would do if you're in a bunch of those plays is if you want to lock in profits or if you're a little bit heavier than you want it to be um, for averaging down for, for whatever reason, or if you're trying to get out of that and you're not trying to get screwed, what I would do is probably set some cells. So for example, SOS, 
if Bitcoin pushes up, make sure you have some sell order set, some good till canceled um, extended hours. Um, make sure you have those set. And I would set them up towards maybe, you know, 15 bucks or something like that. I would set something just so you can lock something in. You know, personally, that's how I would do it. Um, if we get a quick gap up come 4 a.m. Monday morning, right, and you get at least get your shares filled, and then even if Bitcoin plummets down the rest of the day or the rest of the week, or if the stock doesn't, you know, follow and it kind of falls back off, at least you got something off the table. So that's how I would recommend some of those Bitcoin plays. Um, CTXR, how C what's CTXR? And for those who are jumping in now, I went over just a little bit. Um, I went over the the stuff that I added to this week just a little a few minutes ago. So if you want to go back, I think you probably can scroll back a little bit on the video um, and, and check it out. Or if you're watching after the fact, um, I talked about those guys. And I'll talk more about them tomorrow, and I'll, I'll dive a little bit deeper into some of them and why uh, on tomorrow's video for sure. CTXR is getting up there over these, um, these prior highs, so it's breaking out for sure. We had a lot of resistance to grind through the past couple of weeks up in like the mid ones. It did that and then like the mid to upper ones and then two bucks. It grinded through all those. So now it's up into kind of free range. If it, I, well, if it closes over two bucks, that would be a really good sign um, for CTXR. So that would be good. Um, OEG, but adding to the position. Let's take a peek at that. How is OEG looking? Um, this guy, you know, is up quite a bit, but that said, right, we still are putting in higher lows, so we can still kind of roughly draw in something from these wicks to where it's at right now. So we kind of have a trend line there. I would not want to see this thing coming down below seven bucks based on some of these wicks. If it does that, that's too weak for me. So I wouldn't want to see it, but it is in a consolidation phase, right? Roughly. So it, it does look pretty good. Down to seven bucks is where I'd be adding. And then under seven, I probably would be cutting that um, for, a, for a loss. I mean, maybe it runs after that, but it, it, at some point you got to kind of think or think to yourself, you know, how much downside can I afford or can I handle, you know? And if, if we do get a dip down under seven, do I have the cash on hand to add to my position if I have conviction on the, on the play? Or if I don't and I want to move on to the next one, I see my money, my, my money's better used somewhere else and I find a better setup and I'll just play something else. Well, then that's, you know, that's where you decide to cut it. So that's how I pretty much play everything. Um, I don't get too caught up in like, you know, hoping and praying for everything and like, like diving too deep into stuff, you know, because I think you know, you're, you're kind of selling yourself, yourself short. There's so many plays um, out there for sure. JE is another one. JE, take a look at this. JE is a decent one. I think I've played in the past a few times. Um, it's coming back down to the buy range. So under this, like in this blue line, or it's actually sitting at the 50 SMA, this, this blue line, it's in the blue box and you can't really see it. It's sitting at it right now at like 575 is where that 50 SMA is at. So it's not a bad spot. I would look to just be able to average down or buy more um, on JE down towards like five bucks or so. So that's where I'm personally looking at for JE. I'll probably play it next week if I get a chance to, if it doesn't break, if it doesn't push up. Um, but it's, it's kind of the chart that I have set up on that one for at least right now. Let's see what else. I know people are playing CBAT, CBAT. You're kind of getting some choppiness. This one has been getting held back, it seems like, to a degree. Um, I would have liked it closer to seven bucks. So over eight for me, I'm going to pass, although it is on my list. So over eight is just a pass for me. Not that it's bad. I mean, I just don't want to, I mean, it just doesn't fit my, my risk reward style. And, and there's plenty of other plays, I think, with better um, risk reward, tech, technically speaking, that I'd rather play until this thing comes back under eight, if it ever does. Yesterday would have been a better buy. I, I missed that. I missed the opportunity yesterday to, to buy this one. I know it's up over nine bucks today, so I could have taken some profits from the 750s to the 950s, two dollars per share on a on a sub ten dollar stock. That's pretty pretty dang good. So I would have taken at least something off the table, and so that would have been you know a better a better idea. But um, look, that said, NEPT, look at this, it's actually you know doing really well at the end of the day here. NEPT is grinding up back to two bucks pretty much. I, this this thing is interesting. It's a weird. It, it moves kind of weird. Um, it moved the most in the pre market hours a couple days back prior to let's see back when uh look at this they had news but look at this move hit like almost six bucks from the close the day before of like under three that was a crazy move i wish i had had more shares i just didn't have that many more shares would have been a massive a massive play um sndl how is this guy hanging let's take a peek okay this thing is bouncing a little bit today yeah it is so it bounced actually really nicely off of this 135 area or just, you know, it, it came below a little bit, but it bounced pretty nice off that 135 and then came back up towards like 170 today, which is tons of range. 
Um, that looks pretty good. I think a lot of these cannabis plays will be plays into next week for sure. The question is going to be, let's take a look at SPY, the overall market right now. How is it? Okay, it's going to probably close red. So we got six minutes left. Let me go back to my customized layout and pull up some other stuff that we're looking at. Uh, I'll pull up S. I'll pull up SPY, SPY. And so, yeah, it's going to close under under this 390, it looks like, or potentially under 390 for right now. So down a little bit, which I think is fine. I think it's 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 a good little kind of cool off, a little kind of reset in a sense to a degree. So I, I, I like I kind of like these dips right now because you're loading up. And so the way that I've been, I've been thinking about this past week, personally myself, is been, okay, finding you know what I want to be in. And I added a couple of positions and I'll talk about that one tomorrow as well. Um, I find what I want to be in, adding in a little bit more, uh, deploying a little bit more cash because um, I've been kind of cash heavy the past like week or so. And now, you know, slowly getting that cash back in the market as I see some dips and I see some opportunities that I do like. So that's at least how I've been handling things um, as of late. Um, someone mentioned Solo. Yeah, Solo, we're, I like it. I'm going to give it down to seven bucks. I mean, okay, I'll, I'll look at this one again. You could play it a couple different ways. So you could play Solo down towards seven bucks and say, okay, under seven, I'm going to cut it. And then look to rebuy this thing back down towards like six. And the low sixes, why is that? Because we kind of have these wicks down towards like six dollars back in here from December. So I do kind of think that it may, you know, if, if you get faked out on, on, on this guy and it ends up reversing at some point, yeah, it may bounce off that six dollar area. So you can play it where you can be buying in now with keeping a good chunk of cash. So if you if you do see under seven, that's where you start adding to your position and then cutting it under six. So you're giving yourself a little more downside, but you can, you know, by doing that, you're making sure you have cash available to average down um, on your position. So everyone's got a different kind of plan and style on how they want to play it. Uh, but roughly, you know, downtrend kind of for right now on, on solo, we kind of concede right there. I mean, I'm in, I don't have a crazy amount of solo, but I have some. Um, and I'll be playing that one into next week and we'll see if we can get a nice little bounce uh, at some point. Now, Let's see. I mean, everything's red, which I think as much as everyone, as much as people freak out when everything's red, SPY's red, Dow's red, NASDAQ's red, um, at least for right now. NASDAQ's like borderline even, um, same as the Dow. But these are opportunities. These are, these are good dip by opportunity days. So I mean, it, we could get a bigger dip into next week for sure. You know, who knows what's going to happen this weekend. Um, but we'll see. We're trying to explain KRMD off 50 SMA. Let's take a peek at KRMD. Um, how's it doing? Okay, yeah, so it, it kind of held up and then dipped down below. Um, thinking about dumping it. I, I mean, I, I don't, I would not sell it here personally because as this is, if, if I was looking at this one, I'm, I'm actually, is it on my list? Yeah, it's actually on my list. Uh, I, if anything, I was actually looking to buy this thing. It's on my list as, a, as an option. So I haven't done enough um, digging and due diligence personally into it. So um, I can't say like, oh, I love it right now. And here's exactly why. I think I did a, a video um, and I mentioned, I believe they had a CEO change or something if I'm remembering correctly from a while back when I was talking about it. But, you know, if I zoom out, right, where are we sitting? You know, we're sitting relatively low. Okay. We hit these lows down towards 360 and we hit a higher low here recently down towards 390. So we're around four. I mean, it's up to you on how you want to play it, but I, I would play it until it drops below 360 is how I would play it. But that's also for me saying, hey, I'm in now, I'm looking at it now, and that's how I'm seeing it. So that's just my take on it. Because um, I mean, these sell-offs, it's kind of funny, these sell-offs, for me, they're opportunities. And it's not like I'm, I'm looking to buy and hold these types of things for, for you know plenty of time. I'm looking to get in and get out, make my 25, 30%, sometimes a lot more, sometimes, you know, they may be less, so sometimes you lose, right? And, and move on, you know? <laughs> That's how I, at least how I see it. So I think it's, that's not a terrible entry right now, unless if it's slow and it's not moving much, you know, and you're willing to get rid of it and, and, and just delete it from, from memory. And if it runs next week, forget about it, you know, who cares? So that's up to you. Um, servers you recommend for purchasing crypto. I have, I think there should be a link down below for BlockFi, which actually allows you to earn interest on crypto. I use BlockFi and then I would recommend Coinbase. Um, you can buy on, on Webull as well. This is this platform. There's a link down below for that as well. I know you can buy on Robinhood. Probably wouldn't recommend that, um, but you can buy on a lot of places right now. I personally use BlockFi because the interest factor as well, um, or I would use Coinbase if you're just looking for like a separate like crypto portfolio or like keep your crypto separate from everything else. That's probably a decent way to go. 
um, how, do, how is U, UVXY? Yeah, because, well, it's, it's essentially, um, let's pull it up, UVXY. So we're looking at like kind of the fear index and, and volatility. And, it, and what you're seeing, right, is you're looking at like a volatility kind of, you know, indicator in a sense, right, on UVXY. So the market has been, even though the market's down today, a little bit, right? NASDAQ's up, but everything's like roughly slightly down. Um, and I noticed that with VXX too, that there's like essentially like a lot less fear and we're in a period where we're not seeing many volatile swings. So look at SPY. Look at the past like a week. We have not had a day where it was like, oh my gosh, the floor dropped out from under us or oh my gosh, we're up 2%. We have not had that in like a week and a half. So with that said, <laughs> You know, I can see why, right? We're at a period of, of, of minimal volatility. Now, in, in certain sectors, yeah, you certainly can find stocks with, that are so much more volatile, right, than the overall markets. But the overall market hasn't been. That's kind of why. Um, so that's, that's the thing with, with some of those volatility kind of index plays or the fear index plays is that if you don't get the volatility and things just sit flat, you may think, okay, the market goes down, I'll make money. Yes and no. Not every time does that happen. Um, and also, is fear mounting up? Like, what is everyone f- scared about right now? Where is the fear mounting up on? Like, I don't know. So it's 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 weird. And things can change on a dime, right? Things can happen and, and change super super fast. But you know, that's at least that's that's what we got. So spy closing down just under a quarter percent. So that's the end of the day, at least right there in terms of the overall market. Um, the Dow closed down just barely red. And then the NASDAQ was actually green by almost a tenth of a percent. So that's at least what we got going on. What's DP Dubs up to? Where's DP Dub? I have DPW. Where is it? I think it's looking good. I mean, it, I like to see it holding up around this 640 or so, which is a prior high back in here, holding that as new support. It's looking pretty good. Uh, I can see DPW pushing up over eight bucks. Over eight bucks, I think 10 bucks is pretty, is pretty fair. While we're actually sitting here and, and saying that, I'm probably going to just set a sell for DPW up around like that 10-ish area just so that I have it in case we gap up crazy or do some like crazy something come Monday. Um, so I'm going to just set that. And I recommend for a lot of people who are playing stuff, either that's that's running up into the close or, or that's strong or, or in a hot sector, like for example, Bitcoin. If, if you don't have sell order set and Bitcoin runs, Let's say, let's pull up Bitcoin. Where is Bitcoin at? And Bitcoin runs up to like 65,000 this weekend, which, I oh mean, that that's could be ridiculous. Let's say it's like 60K or something like that. You might get a panic buy, right, at 4 a.m. on like all these platforms come Monday morning. And that could be a, a great opportunity to take some shares off the table on some of those crypto stocks if you're looking to do so. If you're holding them longer term, then, then no. But if you're looking for just trades and, and taking your money and moving on to the next one, that's not a terrible idea. Bitcoin looking very, very strong, at least for right now. Um, a lot of YouTubers got hacked now streaming Bitcoin. Oh, that's not good. That is not good. <laughs> Um, SOS is fine. I mean, SOS, I, I don't, I haven't taken the, I haven't taken it personally, but I mean, I, I like SOS. Um, what do we got? Man, we got some support down to like 10 bucks and then eight eighty five or so as that. And it's got to get back over this 13. And I think it's going to make a shot. I can easily make a room to 15, uh, again, but they've been kind of weird. Some of these crypto plays, they've been kind of weird. Um, so fold, what's up with fold. Okay. This looks pretty good. This is a pretty big sell-off. So we have a bottoming out around this 12 bucks area. So let's see. Yeah, this could be a decent a decent idea. Now, I would give it some more time, or if you want to take a shot at it, you know, take a shot. But you have a pretty big gap to fill back up towards like 18 bucks if you can get over this 14, 15. So this is one of those like bottom plays where, yeah, you're, you know, again, why why is this an appealing chart? To someone like me, or to someone, to some people who like you, know, playing these bottom plays. Well, okay, you're not buying it on the first red day. You're giving it some time to settle. It settled down, and it found some support roughly in the upper 11s to around 12, and now it's got some range back up. This thing can make a move up towards 14 bucks. You capitalize on the two dollar on a two dollar move in the share price very very quickly, and you move on, right? Unless you have some more conviction behind the trade, or there's some more due diligence behind the trade that would you know entice you to, to stay in longer. So I do, I do kind of like that one. Neo for a swing. How's Neo looking these days? Um, what do we got? Hey, this is oh, look at that. Neo is back to the 50 SMA. I think that's a good spot. 
this is a really good ne- uh, neo buy spot. I I want honestly, you know, now that I think about it, that's not a terrible idea. Um, I have it. I I traded a while back in in this account, but I have it in a longer term account that I'm probably just going to hold that steady. You know, if I had some more cash, I would definitely be buying it right now though. So I like that neo idea. Um, block Fi, Block F I is is the um, the crypto exchange. Um, too much stimulus and good news. Yeah, that's the thing, you know. So that, that's why we're just not seeing the crazy volatility right now, at least for now. Let's go back here and let's set up the after hours uh, screener and see what's running in the after hours, um, and we'll go from there. So anything that at least I'm not. I want to make sure that I didn't get caught in an offering or anything like that. No, everything looks fine from my front uh, in terms of what I have, just in case. So it's probably going to be a fairly calm, I would think, after hours, unless we get some crazy movers here. How do I, how long do I hold swings? Um, the, the whole thing with the shares, people always ask about that too. I think that people get caught up in that. I don't think it's a big deal. I think it's 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 a it's, for me it's a it's a count size percentage. Um, so it's like. If my well, my my risk management style, my style is, I play a, a stock, right? I'm holding a stock, and I will no go in no more than ten percent of my overall account on one given stock. That's just my style, right? So, I enter in in, in pieces. So, like let's say like fourths. So I'll go in with one fourth of a total position, and then I'll go in with another fourth, and then I'll go with another chunk. So that's kind of how I'll how I do it personally. Um, but that said, uh, it depends. It depends on, on how many shares. So when I started swing trading, right, sometimes on some stocks I'm buying, like, you know, when I had a hundred bucks in my, when I only had a couple hundred bucks in my account, I was buying like 50 shares, hundred shares, like not even, you know, on, on super cheap stocks. Nowadays, there's no, there's like no stocks down around, you know, 50 cents. So maybe you're buying 10 shares of a stock at like five bucks. I don't know. It's all relative to your account size. I think the, the mindset and the thought process of, oh, you know, I have a super small account. Let me just go all in on a couple of plays till I get it up to a decent amount. And then I can actually, you know, start with some risk management. That's horrible. Like that's a, it's so stupid. Like you're going to end up, you're going to end up losing it. And then <laughs> maybe you win, but you're building horrible habits, horrible habits. I just, it's just like, okay. So at least that. And then in terms of how many, how many um, swing trades I hold, 10 to 15 generally depends on right now market's fairly hot. So 10 to 15, but that doesn't mean like, okay, I'm, I'm all in on 10 to 15. If you do the math, right? How can I be in 10% of, of my account on 15 plays? You can't. So I'm not, I, I'm actually in phases of, of these plays. So for example, some stocks, like I was looking at, um, where is it? Where is the uh, APRE was one that I was in, you know, a little bit heavier a couple of weeks ago. But the thing went up to over eight bucks. And so I sold most of my shares. Now I'm leaving 100 shares to ride because I have such a low average. And so I only have 100 shares left, but I still have the position. So it's technically still a swing because I see a lot more range of the upside here. Um, but I'm in the, the scale out phase. So I'm not really, you know, it's not a super large position. I can, if it comes back down to my average, I'll cut it for break even, knowing I already locked in gains in the trade. So that's kind of how I, how I do that. Watt, appreciate the donation. Watt, it bought a, okay, boom, now look at a dip. Shh, let's take a peek at Watt. Um, mm, this is, the problem with this one is that it was up so much today. So like, look at this thing, like it had a massive spike, massive volume spike, and it's gonna, I mean, for me, it's, I would like to see this thing settle down. So now it's, dip, the dip that you're saying is that, okay, it dipped a little bit to the after hours. So I would watch this one, see how it closes up. Um, I would not touch this thing. I guess it's just me. It's in my style, but everyone's different in terms of how they, you know, how they play stuff. So, you know, um, if, if if you're looking for this one, I would like, I would love an entry back up towards some of these highs, which would be, you know, support now. So maybe down up five bucks if it came down that low, but that's just me. So I'm, I would, I never trade something this high. Um, if you want to day trade it, then yeah, it could be a decent idea. Let's take a peek. Um, but it's just kind of falling off here in the after hours. So maybe it holds up around this 670-ish area, potentially. But not, not, a, not a high probability trade in my, in my view. Um, at least that's just, just my take. Um, USWS. 
This one ran a lot, right? It, it popped a lot. Yeah, so this one, this was, I'm not trying to catch the knife here on this one. It popped to three, you know, well over three, and then it's coming back, back down. If it came back down to two or under two, maybe, maybe that's an idea, maybe. But for right now, not a huge fan. It's kind of let it, let it come back down. RHT.V. Um, I don't think I can even pull that one up. I definitely, I definitely can't even pull it up. So, uh, no, I don't. I can't. So I, no, I, I, and the thing with, with Weeble too is that I don't. I pretty much don't mess with um, even OTCs and stuff. I think that they're starting to, they're starting to allow some OTCs and some. They, you can actually get access to other exchanges as well. Um, I don't mess with that stuff at least as of right now. Just sticking to, sticking to what I know personally. So, um, RMO. Romeo Power is trying to hold up right here. It's trying to hold up around 15-ish. That's what it's trying to do. But I would give it some more time, see if it settles down a little bit. Um, we saw a decent bounce in some of these kind of um, some solar plays and some plays like that. We saw a decent bounce on a, on a bunch of those. So we'll see if they if they can hold up and they can recover pretty well. Um, I do like some of these. RMO is one that I do actually think if I if I wanted to, I'd probably just buy it right now in my longer term swing account and forget about it. But uh, for a trade, it's it's a little bit tough to say because it's kind of just it's holding around 15. If it can hold 15 for a while and and kind of bottom out here and show that this is now support around this 14, 15, then yeah, it's probably a solid entry for a little bit of a better play. Um, Neo looking really good. I like Neo a lot actually. At the 50 SMA, boom. 55 bucks, you know, I could see it coming down a little more, but that's a solid spot for NEO. Yeah, okay, here's the thing though. NEO hasn't tested this line in quite some time, and it recently did back in December, okay? And then it's testing it again. At some point, the trend is going to break. So at some point, NEO is no longer gonna hold the 50 SMA, but that said, I'm bullish on NEO longer term. So for me, this is a dip by opportunity. I'd be looking to buy this thing here and just, you know, stashing it away in my long-term account. I don't have any cash available as of right now there, so I don't I don't have any to buy right now um, unless I sell something else. Um, so I'm just kind of holding tight on my, my NEO longer-term position. PLTR actually just bought some today recently um, in the long-term. Um, so that's just me. I mean, probably not a terrible, not a great decision to do that on a, on a green day. Yesterday would have been better, but we're still on a relative low. So I do like PLTR at least, you know, where it's at. I think it's fine. Uh, anything under 30 bucks, I think is pretty solid on, on PLTR. But for, for, we're talking months out, I'm not talking for like, okay, next week. I'm talking months out. I'm pretty, uh, I'm, I'm fairly confident in that one. Um, you have uh, ARK Invest continuing to buy, buy more um, PLTR, right? I think we can even pick, uh, check it out. Let's, let's actually just do that really quick. Let's go to, I think I have a Lucid Tracking. Here's the site, Lucid Tracking. Um, we can pull it up. It's just kind of fun to see sometimes, just to see what we can, what we can do. PLTR. Let's pull it up. Let's load up here, and then we can take a peek at to what is Arc up to. Because I mean, everyone likes to use Arc as a as like their kind of their bar, right? their measurement tool. I mean, I don't I don't get too caught up into it, but it's you know it's something that's moving stocks nowadays, right? So if it's if it's something's going to move stocks i'm going to play pay attention to it okay so what do we got okay the charts loading up by trading view yep we have the weeble chart no big deal uh what do we got wow they bought a lot um do they really have a lot they have a decent amount wow look at that so this is showing you the aggregate so across um okay arc arc k bought a ton that's why arc k arc w uh, has had some but arc k is what i believe is where they bought a Crap ton. Where we got? Um, yeah, look at this. They bought 5.2 million shares um, on the 18th. <laughs> wow. So, and that's on ARK K. They've had some shares on ARK W. They actually have increased recently, but they bought a lot in ARK K. So there you go. Um, so PLTR is getting a uh, getting the people that getting the ARK Invest, and that's a pretty significant amount, right? Um, or a significant increase in what they're holding. So that's, I'm glad I, uh, I glad I bought some. I didn't even look at that and I, I bought some today. There we go. But this is, again, this is a longer term position. I'm not really too worried about it right now. Like it, it may, it's up 15%. So yeah, did I buy on the best day? No, I should have bought yesterday. I looking back, right? But 
Uh, it is what it is. I'm, 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 I'm on my longer term positions. I'm, I'm less worried about the specific entry price, and I'm saying, hey, we're relatively low here. I'm looking for this thing to make a double in the next year or so. I'm fine with that. So, most of my longer term positions, I look at them as like, hey, I'm looking to probably double my money on this trade in the next months, couple years. I mean, not couple years. Usually, the next couple months to, to a year or two, um, generally. Or I'm just holding it long term, and that's that. So. Like for example, Neo is something I'll probably hold for a while unless there comes out some news that I no longer like Neo. You know, I'm probably not going to sell my Neo. Um, just to try my best to get into swing trading my account um, up to the 25k. Um, yeah, awesome. I appreciate that. That's the thing. That's what we try to the the, 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 my, the the videos that I make. Right, obviously a lot of that is coming down to like things I've learned are my strategies, which is not going to fit everybody. I, I understand that, but. Um, the, the strategy of, if you're looking at day trade stuff and you're looking at day trade, like you can go into day trading options, which is a whole another beast than day trading penny stocks. Um, let's understand, right? If you're going to day trade a stock, for example, look, look at RETO. Yeah. An after hours mover must've had some news. We can dive into that at a different time. Right. But you're going to, if you're going to day trade R, RETO, let's look at the one minute chart right? Yeah, there's opportunity here, but you're already up. The stock was just trading at like 125, okay? You're buying this thing at like two bucks. You are you have a significant risk, you know, the, the risk reward profile is not in your favor here unless the momentum continues or unless you're a really good scalper and you're quick. If you can, you know, people, some people are really good at that and others are not. Now, you can compound your money a lot faster with day trades because whether the market's green or red doesn't matter, right? You you can just pick your pick your trades. You can play short. You can play long. Whatever you want to do. And if you're more of a swing trader, yeah, on days where the market's down, usually those are the dip by days. Usually those are the days where you're averaging down on your positions. You're trying to you know grab some more shares here and there. You're not going in. You know, you know, you're not making money. You're kind of setting yourself up for next week. And that's how I kind of view this week, right? The end of this week, things kind of cool off. Things chill out. You know, not too much volatility, but the market was slightly down a couple of days. Okay, cool, right? What am I doing? I'm finding my my swings I want to be in for next week. I'm finding, you know, maybe not next week. Maybe it's the next couple of weeks. So I'm, a lot of the swings that I'm in are more patience plays. Not necessarily, oh, I'm going to buy it today and I'm expecting tomorrow it's going to go up. No, like that's not the, the, the swings that I'm playing are more patience plays. You're buying support. You're looking at the daily chart and that's that. So I think for most people under PDT, that's the, that's the way to go to get yourself to PDT. And then from there, you can adapt a different strategy and, and maybe you're, you're starting to scalp. You like scalping or, you know, you like whatever kind of day trades. You like, you like momentum trades, you like breakout trades. It's up to you. But I think the safest way for someone who's brand new is, is looking for support buys, is looking for value, you know, value swings, um, undervalued plays, things like that with Catalyst. Um, I hold my long-term stocks in a couple, I mean, I have a couple different places. So I've had Robinhood as one, of course, everyone would know with, with, with what's going on, right? So I have, I had M1, I have M1 Finance. I have some money in M1 Finance. There's a few places. Fidelity I have used. Uh, and then I'm actually, I have an IRA now with Weeble. So I'm actually transferring money from a prior IRA into Weeble. So that's also going to be one of my long-term accounts as well. Uh, quite a few, uh, quite a few places, but um, ideally I'd like to have the IRA in Weeble just because I could easily manage it a lot more. Uh, and, you know, once I start really kind of, you know, playing with the IRA and, and having more access to it, I'm not going to be like day trading stuff in the IRA. The IRA is going to be long swings. So for example, right, buying like Neo, like one of my first trades, like if I, if the IRA, once the money becomes available in there, um, in the Weeble IRA, if, if Weeble, if, if uh, I'm sorry, if Neo is still sitting down in the mid fifties, you know, I'm going to take a, a decent chunk of that money of that cash and, and grab some Neo. And then, you know, if it's a longer term swing. So for example, um, some of the drone stocks these days, so we look at UAVS. I think someone mentioned it before. I'm sorry if I missed it. UAVS came down at the 50 SMA, good bounce. But look at UAVS, right? From a sub $5, a sub $3 stock a few months back to hitting over 17, a drone play. Um, what's, what else, what's another drone play? VISL is another drone play. So this is one that like on dips, on red days, I like VISL as a longer term play. So this is one for the IRA, right? Could, could be one for the IRA. Um, or even some longer term SPAC plays. Like for example, people like Clove. Um, I have some Clove in my longer term portfolios as well. Clove is sitting down here in the mid tens, a pretty good buy range if you had to ask me. Uh, oh look, someone actually asked Clove. What do you think about Clove into the earnings March? Yeah, I don't know. Um, 
I, I don't honestly I don't know <laughs> how how close going to go into earnings. I'm going to just going to hold it um, as a longer term position, and if it dips, then that's where I'll buy a little bit more. Probably is probably my my take. I think it could get. I think we can see some panic sellers into that. Wouldn't be surprised. Um, I think we're seeing some manipulation here, and I think I think it's just kind of a a shot at Chamath. I think he's getting his uh, he's getting a little shot taken. Ultimately, right. Ultimately, what matters here is not Chamath, right? It's not the short-term action, the manipulation. What ultimately is going to matter here is the longevity. So I believe in it right now. I believe in Clo from everything I have seen in my due diligence on it. Um, but I don't believe in it to be like a trade for today into next week to make me like a hundred percent. Right. I think this is going to be a solid play to tie up some cash as kind of a, a beating the market type of play in the next year, two years, three years. Um, you know, and that's just kind of my take on it. Um, we'll see what happens. Earnings to me, it'd be interesting. That'll be a pretty good benchmark, and we'll see how, how things go from there. So that's kind of, I mean, I'm waiting for that. Um, Bitcoin at 56? No way. Let's go up, check it. Look at that. Wow. And so look at that. Bitcoin, as we're speaking, just hits new highs. Nuts. Nuts. So what is uh, some of the Bitcoin plays are going up, right? SOS is up 1%. They're not moving that much. Mara's up like 2% or so in the after hours. They're not moving too much, but they're moving a little bit. Um. Yeah, it's all about thanks. I appreciate it. It's all about it's all about the um the what I what I would say the thing that's that's key too, and it, everyone has a different different kind of you know process or abilities, right? But another thing that I think is massive lately too is is screen time. So you know, getting up at like five a.m. and watching the pre market runners, right? Watching what's running pre market. Now I'm not trading them, right? So what I'll do on on and I'll, as I'll watch, like for example, I'll go to the pre market, is I. I'll be getting up early, right? I'll get up 7 a.m. Eastern is, I would say, the, the the time block. If you're up before then and you're ready, come 7 a.m., a lot of companies will, will start issuing press releases at that time, and you'll start to see what's moving, So for the for, especially for the penny world, right? Um, so what I will do is, is I'll, I'll watch them, and I'll get a sense. And over time, you start to say, okay, here's how these stocks are moving. Here's what's hot. And you're building up the screen time so that, you know, from that, now this can help shape your swings. They're like you're starting to notice trends. You're starting to notice patterns. That's huge. Also, just watching charts and, and just diving into charts and diving into stuff like, um, where is it, Finviz? Diving into Finviz, going to the screener section, and just messing around, saying, hey, I'm going to go and, and mess around with, with, with stocks in here and, and start pulling up technical indicators. Okay, we're looking at the 50-day high or low. I'm looking for new lows, looking for new highs. And just starting to scroll through some stocks that like, you know, and, and finding a pattern that works best for you. And really, like, that's kind of the, the biggest thing is just taking the, the screen time. O- overall, that, that's been like my biggest, I mean, the biggest thing that's helped me. People ask, like, you know, where you got started and stuff. Yeah, there's been a bunch of places, and I have a bunch of resources that I link in the description boxes for people who can check it out. What I used, um, there's no course. I'm not giving. I'm not selling people a course. You know that I have. I'm just giving you resources that I've used in the past. Um, but screen time, I, I would say, is the it's it's free to a degree, right? It's obviously your time. It, you, you, it, you're paying, but I think it's a great investment because you're 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 ultimately putting the time in now. But if you put in you know hours of if you put in 30 minutes to an hour of screen time on average per day, right? Stack that up over the over a course of a year. You may not make any money in the first year, but if you do that, I can guarantee you if you're actually learning from that and you're not, you know, an idiot by just watching the screen, right? Obviously, you got to see what's going on, process it, start to think ahead and start to make some sense of how stuff how stuff works, watching a little bit of level 2, watching things like time and sales, watching the pre-market runners, watching what sectors are hot, how the sector rotation works, how money is moving through different sectors. Next year, you know, that however many hours it was the first the first year, that next year you're going to be that much more prepared and you can take, you know, some big action. So that's one of those things that as you size up, as your positions grow, as your account grows, now it becomes a game of like for, for, I don't care about people always uh, people I see too much of that stuff going on on Twitter and stuff too. Oh, I got a starter in this stock, uh, just just 20,000 shares or 100,000 share starter. Like I, I, the thing is, who cares if you're someone who's new? Who cares about how much money someone's got in the game? It's about the the percentages. If if you have whatever your account is, if you can can grow your account at like fifty percent per year, or a hundred percent, or a thousand percent per year, right? People, you know, you got to work your way up. If you do that, 
how many years is it going to take for you to have money where it's like life changing on one trade? Like you make a 10% trade and that's a massive amount of money, more money than you would have ever made, you know, at a job for a day or for a week or for a month or for a year, right? So that's the, that's the name of the game. It's, it's keeping yourself alive. And so you can get to that point. At least how I see it, right? Um, started my account with 2K. Should I open up two accounts? Yeah, it's up to you. If you, if you like the day trading aspect, then yes, um, you could do that. What I would recommend is personally, um, what I would do is I would just open a cash account with 2000 And then this way, you know, you're playing fairly small. So um, with a cash account, you can't really buy, you can buy with unsettled funds, but you really, you can't day trade with unsettled funds. So you have to watch your settled funds versus your unsettled funds and make sure you're just working with the settled funds. So it takes a few days um, to settle. I think like usually like two, two days. Um, so I would recommend a cash account and then start starting small. So if you're taking trades, maybe you're going in with like 250 to $500 per trade roughly in there. And so this way you're, you're probably never going to actually um, hit, hit a point where you don't have any cash available unless you're making a ton of trades a day. Then maybe the, the, the multiple accounts is better for you. So that's how I see it. I say a cash account. So you don't have to worry about taking day trades, but you have to worry about the settled funds. So pick your poison almost in a sense. And it's one of those things. I think the right regulations are set against a lot of people starting out, but there are ways through it. And that's why I think swing trading initially and adding funds to your, to your account is the way, the way to beat it. I mean, it's easier said than done. Obviously some people have the luxury of being able to add money and some people don't. Um, but if, if you can add money, even if it's just five bucks a month or whatever it is, I, you know, whatever works for you, if it's a hundred bucks a month, if it's a thousand, if it's 50 bucks, whatever it is, if you can add money to your account and just be very picky on your trades over time, you're going to hit that PDT rule. And then you don't have to worry about it. Um, appreciate the info. Yeah, I, that's, I, that, thanks. I, I appreciate that. You know, the way that I see it too is that there's a lot of stuff on YouTube, right? Especially nowadays, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube, right? Where it's just top five penny stocks to buy now and stuff like that. If I ever, in my videos, right? If I, when I talk about the top penny stocks, whatever to watch, which will be tomorrow's video, um, I, I make sure that like we're explaining what, why we're explaining why, and it's not kind of random and we're not going off of somebody else's price target or this or that. We're going off of how do we identify a, a solid risk reward trade here where yeah, a lot of times, you know, or it's not a lot, sometimes um, the trade doesn't work out. But if you have, you know, if you have a 50-50 win ratio, 50 wins, 50 losses, but your losses are 10% and your wins are 25% or more, you're, you're profitable. You're consistently profitable. Yeah, you'll have, you'll have weeks where you crush it. Go back to my past two weeks on my Saturday video where I, I talk about the top penny stocks. Those are my, t like, those are two of the biggest weeks percentage-wise on the account. I've had, you know, oh, probably ever. Um, but you, you know, you're, you're going to have weeks like that. Then you're going to have weeks where it's calm. You're going to have some red weeks. Go back. I think three weeks, three weeks ago, I had like a red week by like 1% or maybe like 0.2%, something like that. I was slightly red, but then the next two weeks absolutely crushed it after. And that's how I see this week. So if you're red this week on swings, you know, you're kind of setting yourself up for next week. So dip buying, finding your undervalued plays for next week. That's ultimately what's going to be, you know, what's going to set you up for the for the success in the future. If you're a day trader, yeah, you can be kind of in and out one day, and it depends every single day. How do I do? You can you can you know evaluate every single day. A swing trader, you can't really do that, and a lot of times you kind of have to figure out what's going to do, you know, what's going to set me up for next week. Understand and, and, and embrace the red this week, so that next week you can you can lock in those gains and capitalize on on bigger moves. So that's that. Um, um, BCNX. And also what I want to do too, is I want to make sure that like, I, I, I kind of see like, um, I want to have a, a solid the, the, I want the VCNX personally right now. Um, how is it doing? It, it was a, it was a pre-market gapper. This is, this is one of those plays that has a lot more downside. So I don't mess with this one at this point. And we can look at this. It's actually crazy. Look at this chart on, on VCNX. It literally came up. If we draw in a horizontal line at this high, like it pretty much came up to that 950 ish area where it was a prior high. That's why it's so important. I think to look at the daily chart, look to the left, where was prior resistance? That's why it's so telling and, and helpful as a tool, right? To guide you through. The problem here is that it has a gap down from about 470 all the way down to like in the mid threes. So that's my only concern is that this thing has a lot of range to the downside. So this gap may get filled just like this gap right here how we had this downside gap, how that gap got filled to the upside. 
Well, this gap to the downside can certainly get filled, right? So I would be careful. I don't play after they spike one day. I don't play these stocks on this day. I give them time to settle down. Once I show support, if it, if it, let's say it finds up, it winds up and, and holding up like $4.75 as support, and then that's a better entry, right? Whereas buying now with not much history on the chart. But I will say prior support was back in here, right? Back in um, the fall, back in September. Um, this is prior support at 475. Just so happened today, we held that level. So that's key. Hold, if it can hold 475, that could be a good entry spot. That's at least my take on that. Um, CBAT, I'm, let, me, let me go over to the uh, bigger screen so we can see this stuff better. How is CBAT looking? So this thing, I like it. I personally want it. I'm, I'm picky and I want it under under eight. I didn't do it yet. I didn't buy it under eight yesterday. That was my bad. I missed it. So I just didn't take it. But it's on my list as one of the top plays I'm looking at. Um, so it is a, is a stock I certainly like. Um, I want to see $10 plus on it personally. But uh, that's at least that's at least my take. Um, bag holding clove. I guess I guess you can. I guess I'm in a, in a similar position. <laughs> um we will give away. Yeah, level two. They have you have. I think you get like three months free, maybe, and then you have to pay um, one ninety nine a month, two bucks a month. I mean, it's 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 fine. I I I think if you're someone who's new and can afford it, please use it and, and actually like pay attention to it and, and watch it and see how it works. Like see how oh wow we got some buyers stacking up on like eight ten here on on CBAT. Oh, we got some sellers up around eight thirty six. Okay, now you can kind of see how the price action moves. If that seller goes away or if, if that seller gets eaten through, boom, you know, we can watch level two, watch time and sales. Watch time and sales is going to tell you where, like, literally what's getting filled, what orders are going through and when and what exact time. So, like, that's super key, I think, um, and super, super helpful. Um, uh, 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 uh. I don't, I personally don't trade full time. Like it's not like a, it's not like I, I don't actually rely on this on it as income. Um, so I use it and it's going to be like a, it, it eventually one day. Yes. But like I personally don't, don't trading is not like my, my full time, you know, job. It, I do it for it's, I do it on like a kind of like a side hustle. Although I spend a decent amount, I spend plenty of time, you know, especially researching, you know, videos and, and, and watching charts and watching stuff. Yes. But the way that I see it too, is that, you know, it's an exponential game. So but the time you put in now, right? For example, now I'll make a trade. If I make 20%, that's X number of dollars. Okay, cool. But as you put in the time, as your account grows, or as you kind of get more comfortable and as your account, you know, piles up, that 20%, it's the same exact trade that you made last year or last week or last month. But that 20% is now a significantly larger amount of money. So that's that's how I see it. I personally, for me, until you reach a point of, of super consistently and you've done it for like a year plus consistently and you have a plan of, of how you how you manage stuff, um, I don't recommend people just jumping into it if they have a ton of money just to, to say, yeah, I'm just jump into it. I would say give yourself a good a good solid year before you, you get to that point. Um, unless, you, unless you have kind of crazy money where you never have to you know worry about <laughs> your expenses, I guess. That's that. Um, but at the end of the day... Um, I don't think I'll, I, I, cause like, I can't say that like I would, I would be like a, a full-time, tr I guess, trader, I guess you maybe, I don't know. It depends. depends. Um, the way that I, I see a full-time trader is like, that's what I do. Like, that's what you do. Like I, I do other things as well on top of that, that are, are sources of income. So that's that. Um, how much money do you recommend for a long term? It, 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 it depends. It really depends. Uh, if you have, you know, the ability to put in whatever, you know, it's up to you. If you, if you have X number of dollars, you know, put into a long-term account that you don't need and you're looking to invest that long-term, then that's what you put in. If it's a hundred bucks, if it's a thousand bucks, if it's 20,000, if it's 50, you know, whatever it is. And, and I recommend, you know, for the long-term accounts, the way that I do it is that I take X number of dollars of income and I say, okay, I'm putting X number and I set an automatic deposit into the long-term accounts every single month that comes in every single month. And this way, I don't have to worry about it. And then every month, so I'm waiting on the first on the first of the month. That's what I do. So I'm waiting for like you know another couple of weeks, two more weeks or so, until I have more cash to deploy into new to new trades or new new positions or add to positions in the long term account. Um, Jag X, I think. Um, was that, I was looking at this one today. Let's take a peek. Ooh, I do like this one a lot actually. This chart looks pretty good. 
So here's an example of like, okay, I don't play the first, you know, push up spike, but now we've got this one some time to kind of consolidate. And now roughly I can see a two, I mean, worst case scenario, this thing comes down to like 250. I would say like a 260 support or so. So you're risking from where it's at, like 15, I mean, uh, 25 cents, the downside um, for, I mean, reward. I would be looking for like, honestly, like 350 plus. I think four bucks isn't out of the question. You know, this is one of those where it's like, if it makes a nice little U shape on up, that would be a beautiful type of U-shape. So we're kind of at the bottom of the U, starting to look like it wants to kind of round the corner and push up. So that could be a solid trade. That's a good, that's a good, if you're looking for a swing, here you go. I mean, I, I'm personally not in this one, but I like that. That's a good idea. I mean, I could probably put it on the list too for next week. So if, I, if I'm if i you know looking for a, a position next week, you know, there it is. <laughs> um, Sorry, I'm going back through a bunch of comments. I missed a bunch of things. Um, I don't worry. I don't. I actually. I mean, I. I had this analyst tab. I actually don't worry about. It. I don't even look at it personally. Um, so it's, it depends. I, I would. I would dive. I would dive deeper into the analysts' ratings and why. Um, I don't. I don't. I mean, I like to have them on the bottom, just so I can see them. But I don't worry about them too much, to be honest. Um. Yeah, the thing, the thing I want to make sure people understand too with the averaging down situation too on red days, right? You can look at it two ways, averaging down or accumulating shares at a lower price. So, you know, if, if you believe in the play and you like the play, you have conviction on it and you believe that the sector will get hot or the stock will get hot or they're going to announce news or they have this or they're going to have a run up into earnings or they're going to have an announcement on their new product, then that's where you average down or buy more at a lower price. So... You know, that's how I see it. Did, uh, did I didn't pick up iSun. I, I think I was I was talking about I liked it. It's kind of in a weird spot. I was actually as it kind of fell below some of these levels, as it fell below the sixteen fifty, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna give it a little bit of time. I was looking for maybe it to fall down to like fourteen fifty or so, which it got kind of close yesterday. Uh, I got to fifteen, so this fifty SMA is gonna be solid. So I think it's it's gonna make a pop. Um, it may I would what I want to see on it is see it kind of consolidate under like $18. And then that's where I'll take a position as the 50 SMA pushes on up. Because this is, this is going to be pushing on up every every day. So that's going to be solid. HCMC. How are we looking? See, I don't, I don't, these aren't stocks I personally play. However, right, we are, you're kind of in the, in the, in the falling knife period, I would say. But these types of plays, they, they are the OTC plays. They're, they're not, I, I don't have much experience trading them. So they, they do trade differently. So the same, you can look at the same kind of styles and same pattern stuff as, you know, any other stock. Yes and no. So you, this all of a sudden may bounce super hard next week. And it didn't give me some time for it to consolidate where it, maybe it's, it's holding up around this uh, 003. You got the vacuum. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Hopefully it's not too loud outside. Someone's vacuuming outside the apartment. <laughs> um, CTXR. This one, people are asking about this one. This one's actually decent uh, in terms of it's breaking out. So if we zoom out, tons of, of, of volume coming in and it broke out through some key areas. So sorry, I'm zooming out here. It had to grind through the mid 150s, the, I mean the, the mid ones, the 150 ish range. It was a grind through period. Then it pushed up and it broke over two bucks. And it was, and now we're into kind of some uncharted free range in a sense. The next kind of spike on the charts up to like 250. So I think this could make a run to 250. Um, it closed over two, which is good. Now we'll see how it opens next week. Um, BCRX. This was a decent dip by a couple days ago, right? Um, on this dip down here, it was been solid. I don't know enough about it though. So um, I wish I could say I love it. I just don't know enough about it to play a stock up this high. So this is more of a, a fundamental play slash a conviction play. So for me, I'm I'm looking to be buying this thing like, you know, on, on areas down in here, right down in here. That's personally my strategy where, you know, obviously you want to look at catalysts and you want to look at what's going on behind the scenes. But up here, is a little bit different. It's more of a, a fundamental undervalued play where I don't know enough about the company personally to say, oh yeah, I, I love it. Um, CBAT to love it. I think CBAT's going to make a shot. I think CBAT is going to be solid. Give it some time though. I mean, it's, it's taking some time to kind of grind through. 
11 bucks gets up back to these prior highs. I think it can go above those prior highs, but um, we'll see. BTT. Um, what is this BTT? Are you talking? Or what do you mean BTBT? Um, what is this? Is this just like a index fund or something? Mutual fund? Um, BTBT is a Bitcoin play though. BTBT is a Bitcoin play which pulled back today. Weird with Bitcoin up. So that's that's weird. That's an example of like, okay, that something's up there. That's a dip I would be interested in buying. Or maybe they, there's more going on behind the scenes. But I think 20 bucks seems like it's holding up. So that's a solid play, I think. And I played BTBT down off this trend line up towards 25, 26. Um, or even got close to 30 bucks. Yeah, I played it before. I, I'm not in it right now, though. Um, ASMB, let's take a peek. I'm in this one. I'm giving it down towards 550 as my my support here. So yeah, it fell below the 50 SMA. Not a huge deal. I'm giving it some more time. I actually bought, my average is just above six. So I'm not super worried about it. I'll give it down to 550. I'll buy some more there if it cracks below. You could probably hold it down below further. I think it could certainly come down below further to maybe towards five bucks. Maybe even five bucks is not a terrible spot to hold down to. And I'm willing to do that because I'm not in big. So I can always add to that. Um, you know, it, it, this one I think is, is going to be fine. We just need to get an update from them relatively soon. Um, and they have plenty of cash. So I'm not worried too, too much about this guy. It's a patience play. Though. These, a lot of these bottomed out swings are patience plays. You're not going to get the move tomorrow, right? Unless there's news. CCIV. I never bought it. I, I do like it though. I never bought it though. <laughs> um, today's a dip buy. So if you were, if you missed out, um, it could be a decent day to grab something. You're going to get some volatility here. So I think this could be a good longer term hold. Honestly, um, two wicks down to 50 bucks. 50 bucks is probably going to hold up a support for right now. So if 50 bucks can hold up a support, it's probably solid. Um, Mara right now. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird. You know, Mara is, has been weird. I, I'm holding a, about a starter position size um, on Mara. And for Mara, it's like, for me, it's like, I'm holding a starter and I'm going to ride it up until Bitcoin momentum stops. Like that's, that's it. So I'm, I, I think it, it could be lagging behind a riot to a degree. Um, also, wouldn't it be terrible for Mara to come out with a PR and update us on something, right? So that could send it further. That's what also helped um, Riot push up quite a bit. So that is what it is. Did you build a snowman? Put your. <laughs> I did not. I did, this. The funny thing is, now that I'm looking outside, we still have some snow. A lot. Of, a lot of melt today. It was like in the mid 40s here in Texas. Um, but yeah, and the snow was super fluffy and and light um, when we when we got it because it was super cold when we, when we first got the snow. Um, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking a lot of a lot of the the my goal is that I'm taking a lot of the um, if you guys don't know I have two two um, two channels the second one there should be a link below to it it's stock trends so what I'll do there is if, if I get a lot of questions on on a, if I'm noticing in the comments everyone's asking hey do a video on this do a, like what's your thoughts on this I'm not gonna do that on the main like my face my brand channel I guess um, that's here's where I like to do more kind of. I guess, personal videos, like what I'm doing, kind of uh, more tutorial style videos, like how to do this, right? How to's and stuff like that. The Stock Trend channel, I made it for that exact reason, um, literally just to talk about specific stocks. And so we dove into today, DPW, we talked about what's going on, technicals, things like that. Um, in prior videos, we talked about, and let me tell you, the, um, uh, what's it called? SNDL. For whatever reason, there is, well, I, I guess there's a lot of people on, on more than just, you know, there's a lot of people who, who just eat up SNDL for whatever reason. So I make some videos on it because I, I get a lot of questions on it and everyone's always asking, what's it going to do? What are your thoughts? So I talk about the chart. I go over some of these lines. We went over in prior videos on how this stuff came about. Um, but like those types of videos, they get a, SNDL gets a lot of views for whatever reason. So the goal is that what I want to do with with taking a lot of that, taking a lot of that, um, I guess, ad revenue 
and putting that into the IRA or putting that into the long-term portfolio and then kind of growing that money um, in those portfolios. Whereas the trading account, we, we, my Webull account we talk about here, um, I'm not actually adding my money to it. The money that gets added to it is free stocks. So they actually, I got a bunch of XONE. XONE, um, it's a 3D printing company. And so I got a bunch of it, right? So I unlock, I got a bunch of free stocks. And this is back when we had the whole Robin Hood um, madness, right? So I was like, hey, like, you know, if you want a new broker, check out Webull. So I recommend my link and I get a free stock when someone signs up and deposits and you guys get like two or at the time they're getting four free stocks. So it was like a, a killer win for you guys. Um, and so it was at like, I got it like 35, it hit 66 and I got a lot of them. So I was like, oh, that's actually pretty cool. Like I almost doubled my money on, on a free stock, but it takes like seven to 10 days for it to hit the account. So I got some finally hit the account today and I sold them at 50 bucks, but I have a lot more coming. So I'm hoping that that X and E can push back up, break out of this downtrend, make a run back up. And I'll, you know, I may actually hold some of those shares. If, if they show up next week in my account, I may actually hold some. Um, first time checking out a uh, new trade. Awesome. So hopefully the, the, the idea, hopefully is that the, the, my whole point of the channel is that I want to be, you know, this 2021 really is going to be, I think a, a great year to build out and do a really good job. That's, that's always on my list to start organizing the playlist a little bit better. So I want to organize playlists really nicely to kind of go in different categories, specific things. So it's not just like, okay, here's a swing trading playlist. And there's like a ton of videos over time, right? That, that playlist is going to be massive, which is good if you want to comb through, but I want to make it kind of more kind of focused in on certain things. So like, for example, maybe like it's swing trading penny stocks or swing trading um, support buys or swing momentum swings. Like, and I'll kind of build out different mini playlists inside of the larger ones. And so people, can, I'll hope people can come to the channel and just dive into those things. And of course, right, it's a lot of it will be through my experience. So everyone's going to develop their own strategy off of that, but hopefully that's a good starting block and a good, you know, kind of launching pad for a lot of people. So that's the goal. That's the goal for this year. Um, sorry, I'm making, I'm making my way through some of the comments. Um, largest play, largest position right now. Um, Largest position, probably, let's go to my positions, is probably, where is it? Um, not DPW, not solo. Um, USCG is a decent size, I guess, as of right now. Um, three, it's nothing. I mean, I, what I, my, in terms of my, large, my larger positions right now, they're about maybe half of a max position. Not even, they're not even half. They're like about a third or so of a, of a max position size which a max position size for me is 10% of my overall account. So that's how I'm how I have it set up in terms of my risk management. So I'm still as we can say like if my larger size is like a third of the of the max size, what does that mean? I'm I'm still saving a good I'm about my half my portfolio is cash. I'm still saving a good chunk of cash for bigger dips if we get them. Um, now I'm not going to miss out. I want to have some skin in the game, right? So I'm not going to miss out on, you know, what's going on now but for example spy people ask like hey you know we you know, a couple red days you know you know for a small account hurts hurts a lot i hear you but also here's why i love looking at spy when we look back to the left these were some big red days right these were some big red days a couple weeks ago now we look back there and say okay we haven't had we have not had right red days of that size in, in quite some time so we look back to the left and we can kind of see, hey, you know, it's it's starting to make some sense. We can say, okay, we have some bigger potential drawdowns, right? We've had it, we've seen it in the past, it could happen again. So I'm waiting for something like that before I dive, deep, before I really go heavier into some swings. Now, in the process, I'm not going to miss out. So I still have some plays and I'm not going to lose it. I'm not going to, you know, completely, you know, miss out. I'm hearing Jag X is running after hours. What's it up to? Oh, I have the settings to the pre-market still. Um, okay, it's over three bucks. Wow, what, I wonder if they got they got some news on me. Um, CRSR, I think is I, I like CRSR. What is this guy? How has it been doing the past couple of days? Oh, this looks beautiful. I like CRSR a lot at the trend line. At literally at the trend line, really good spot. Putting in higher lows. If it comes back down and drops below thirty-five. 
technically speaking, I don't like it unless you unless you dive deeper into the fundamentals, and then that's kind of how I would see it. Uh, FSR I think could be a type of a neo type of play. However, however, FSR just got they got a twenty three. Actually, we can pull it up. Let's pull it up. Let's go to tip ranks, and there should be a link in the description for tip ranks. Um, a really good place to do a lot of research into some stocks and companies. Um, let's pull it up. Where is FSR? We want Fisker. Um, so here we go. We have a high price target of 27. That was recently by Morgan Stanley. Two days ago, we have one here of 23. So there's some significantly higher price targets um, right now on FSR. FSR, I think, is going to be a grinder, kind of a, a slow mover or a grinder. I have it in the long-term account too. I actually sold $19 call options ahead of this thing, right, last week or a couple weeks ago for expiring this week. And I was kind of freaking out that I was going to have to actually buy them back or roll them into the into a prior week because we were pushing up over 20 bucks. But because the market was somewhat weak or kind of stable, FSR pulled back and has come back below 19 So I didn't get taken out at 19 So I'm good. Uh, I was able to sell those contracts, make some money, and we're, and we're, we're fine. So now FSR, I think it's going to it's gonna hold up around the 17, 8, the 17, 18 bucks as new support as it was a prior resistance in FSR. And then what I want to see here is FSR kind of grind. I think FSR is going to grind. Um, sorry, guys, let me get this out of here. This is just, <laughs> uh, that is, get rid of that. Um, Okay, so FSR, I think, is going to kind of grind its way back up longer term, but could it be a NEO type of play? Yes, um, I think longer term. Could it be a NEO type of play? Potentially, but we got we got to get cars on the road. Cars on the road, we need people to say, hey, this is actually really good stuff. This is cool, and I like the cars, or this is really good. And until we start getting that and we get some earnings and we get some reports on how many deliveries they've had, this, that, and the other thing, until then... You know, we can't really, we can't really say, oh, you know, FSR is going to 100. We can't say that just yet. And their production doesn't start till the end of 2022, so we still got some time. Um, but I think it's a good long-term hold, like a long-term. It's one of those stocks that if it's under 20 bucks, probably going to buy or grab some in the IRA and not worry too much. So that's one of those I, I like, longer term. Um is it better to buy on trendline support or horizontal support? Either way, it, it depends. It, 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 sometimes you get, hor it, it really depends. Horizontal support, I would say, sometimes holds up better than trendline support. Um, but trendline support is great. The steeper the trendline, the more risky that trendline support actually ends up becoming. But for example, uh, FSR, look at this. Hor this is a beautiful horizontal support. It was holding up around 1460 or so, roughly. Beautiful. And that was a beautiful buy. So if you wanted FSR, you had, you know, from the entire month of December through half of February to buy FSR under 15 bucks, um, you know, if you wanted it. Um, NEPT, I do like it. It just pushed up, oops, sorry, um, Neptune Wellness. Um, it, it was, I think it's good. I just, I wanted, I was a little greedy. I wanted it lower. So I was watching it come down, 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 and then I missed the move today, so I didn't grab any. But I think it's still good. If you're in or you're not in, it's probably still got a, a good risk reward. 150 would be my stop on this one. And if we get a gap up in the market or into the cannabis space, here's a good one to watch into next week. Um, I watch I, I, I watch a little bit of the GameStop hearing. I didn't watch too too much of it. Um, I think there was a lot of there was a lot of you know I don't know. I saw some stuff, some clips. I didn't see the, I haven't watched the full thing. So I don't, you know, I can't give myself, I can't give, you know, truly an unbiased, I guess, thought on it. Cause I, I saw people posting clips of it, but I saw, um, Vlad, the Robin Hood CEO kind of evading some, he was literally asked like a yes or no question. And he just didn't give a yes or no. So it was like, okay. And then there's people from Citadel at, like they were kind of evading questions and, and kind of working them around. But what I did, what I did take away from what I saw was essentially that people in government who are kind of, I guess, at, you, you say government right at the top, right, who's kind of overseeing all this stuff, right, have absolutely no idea how the markets work. They have no clue, no clue at all. Many, many. So that's not good, I, I don't think, but who knows? And I saw some stuff saying that there's probably going to be some more restrictions on short selling in the future. We'll see. Um, that, 
it may be kind of be crazy. PLTR, I like long term. I actually bought some today. Um, I, you could, you, I, I don't know. I, I keep it as simple as possible. I don't need to worry about the RSI, for example, like for, for NEPT before today, RSI is going to tell me it's, it's oversold. I know that it's oversold. Like I, I don't need, I don't need the RSI to tell me it's oversold. I'm more of a support and resistance type of person. Um, <clears throat> the only thing I'll use sometimes is the, uh, SMAs and VWAP, VWAP for like intraday patterns. Um, usually stocks with, with momentum will hold above VWAP generally, or if you break above VWAP, you know, it's pretty good. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't, I, I think when you start using too many indicators, you're actually kind of throwing yourself off. I don't think you need to have, uh, that's not that's not the answer to trading. The answer to trading is learning the price action, learning support resistance, learning risk reward, uh, and, you know, and actually implementing and acting on it. That's that's what I see as, as the answer to, to improving your trading. SPACs I'm in right now, I'm in Clove. Um, these, these are all sort of in the long-term account. These are not in, in this account. Um, I'm in Clove. I am in UWMC, which has been bleeding me out pretty nasty past couple of weeks. Um, we'll see. I, I don't think this is, this is a terrible play. Um, it's not a flashy play though. So, okay. Um, and then FRX I actually bought today. What do we got? We got a, a, it pulled back. So I bought a little bit. I didn't buy that much. I want to buy some more next week. This is the merger with Beachbody. Um, so I, I want to dive a little bit deeper into this one, but that's actually pretty interesting. So I like that. And they're saying they're going to be acquiring some stuff and looking to compete with Peloton. So that could be interesting as well. So we'll see. HEPA, I actually, I bought some HEPA today. Um, I'm sitting right where it's at in terms of my average. I want to see HEPA. I played it before. Here's the last, the last time I played HEPA was back around 150 and I wrote it up to over two something. Uh, same type of thing. Now we're playing it in the low twos. I'm looking for three bucks, roughly three plus. Um, if we get it, we get it. Um, we'll see. CTRM has been, um, how is CTRM looking? It had news yesterday, I think, right? Three days ago? It was yesterday. Yeah. CTRM solid support at like 110. So if it comes down to 110, that's kind of where I would like to see CTRM hold up. DFFN though, let's pull up that one. I mean, I like HEPA. I don't know enough about it to say I would, I like it here. Um, if it came down a little bit more, down closer to one, I would like that one personally. Just my thoughts, at least. Um, yeah, Turch, uh, uh, Torch, T-R-C-H. I like that one. Um, I'm not in it. I think it's if you wanted a dip buy, not a terrible idea to have some to get some around three bucks. Um, I actually liked it back last week after the first push. I was watching. I had I drew the support line in, and I came. I went to like I went to the gym or something. I don't even know. And it was like midday. I didn't expect it to get pushed up midday. I thought maybe towards the end of the day, power hour, the last hour of the market, right, is when we'll see if it, if it breaks above this trend line. And then I came back and saw it and it was already up. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm not going to buy it. Now, ultimately, right, I still could have bought it by the end of the day. And I could, still could have made a dollar on it on the shares within like an hour or two. Yeah. But, um, you know, I did not take it. Didn't take it. DSS. Uh, where is it? Do I have it right here? Yes, I do. DSS. Uh, I like, I think it's sitting right here. They have a crypt, they have a crypto um, tie as well. So I have an average of like just under, or just about four bucks. And I'm looking for this thing to make a shot to five. Uh, I like to see five bucks plus on DSS. A PR is potentially what will get us there. So we'll have to see how it goes into next week. We will see. Honestly, I'm kind of, so I used to, the way I used to trade really, or at least last year, I wouldn't say the way I use a trade, but I, I was in a lot more stocks with press that had PRs. So either I'm losing my, uh, I'm losing the PR kind of edge. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't even say it was an edge. It was, it was more luck. Um, but um, I, yeah, I haven't had a, I haven't had a fun, like massive PR runner. Like if like when I, when I say PR runner, we're talking like, okay, where is the biggest gainer on the day? Um, here we go. Let's pull up. Watt, for example, like if I was in Watt yesterday, you know, and I had a hundred percent move today, um, even EOLS is another one of an example, right? Where like you kind of have this crazy run where you wake up and it's like within you know minutes or within a few hours, the stock gets news, gets a press release, and pops off. You know, those are those are fun. Um, the ones I actually remember. Here's one. 
that I was in that was nuts. A while back, AIKI, is this, is this actually what I, was, what I was in? Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah, it was. I'm actually back in AIKI. But AIKI, I was in um, back when it was like 50 cents back in here. This is back in April. So this is a long time ago. Um, back in April, my account was, you know, I, I made I made a few hundred bucks. My account was significantly, um, you know, <laughs> lower than where it is now. But this thing went from 50 something cents to over $2 within like no time. Um, that was insane. And that was one of those, pe- like that's an example of like kind of luck. Luck meets the plan in a sense. Um, bottomed out play, PR blew up. Like the chart setup was, was, was there. The thing shot to over 250, nuts. Whatever percentage, that, that's like a crazy percentage. Um, now I scale out. So am I holding my entire position size that high? No, because not every trade is gonna do that. Um, GHVI, I've heard a lot about, haven't, di- haven't been able to dive deep enough into, I like, I had XL, I made a lot on the, on the big move. So, you know, um, so much. Yeah, I'm, people are saying that, that um, people are getting hacked. That's not good. I have, I will make sure, I appreciate you let me know. I'll, pre- I, I'll make sure that I have my, you know, my um, passwords and stuff in, in line so it doesn't happen to me because in two, two-factor two authentication is that would not be good. Um, last year, I don't like holding too many positions at once. When I say that, it is too, yes and no. I'm in a lot. I mean, I'm in like probably 15 or maybe even more than that right now. But when I say that, I don't want to probably go over 20 positions because the way that I do it is that some of the positions that I'm, I'm still in because I'm, I'm, I'm scaled out, but I have a little bit left because I see more um, potential opportunity. So for example, APRE is one where I see a lot of opportunity here with APRE. So I still am going to hold 100 shares as like a lottery ticket on this one. Um, where I'm mo- I, I sold most on the run up to over eight bucks. Yes. So I was in from the low fives and I sold most over eight or the last or a good chunk over eight. Okay, cool. Now I'm holding a little bit more because there's a lot more range to the upside that I see. That's my, at least my take. Um, but some of them, you know, some of the, uh, my positions I'm heavier in. It's a lot of, a lot of it is just like moving money around. So like I'm in a few that I'm scaling out and then eventually either they're going to pop a little bit higher and I'll take the rest off or I'll just say, okay, it comes back to my average or I'm like, you know what? I'm going to move on. I don't see enough value here. I see my money being better used somewhere else. Sell that, take that money, put it somewhere else and kind of just kind of continue to kind of flush through um, and rotate through like that. So I might be in a lot of positions, but many of them I may be in with a lot smaller size um, because I'm scaling out or I'm just starting, I'm starting to enter. So I want to grab something, but I don't want to, as, as I watch it, the longer I have it in the account, you know, the more days I see it, I see the price action, I see how it's moving, then I get more comfortable and I actually add to that position. Um, yeah, ship could be a decent bounce play. I don't think it's terrible. MITT. That's scary with the that's scary with the whole Bitcoin scammer stuff. That's just oh man, I gotta I I like I'll I'll make sure I, I have that stuff in line because I just that's the last thing I want to deal with. I do not do not want to deal with. That's and I, I've seen people who've gotten screwed by that stuff, where their account gets gets screwed. Um, I have also seen with that though is like their account they do they answer some email or they like click on some kind of phishing thing, and you know there it goes. They somehow get you from there. I, I I just I hope by now though with what's happening right Google's able to handle this stuff, and they're able to kind of you know nip this as quick as possible. But we'll see. Um, MITT is, I think it has, it has, I mean, has been kind of dipped down yesterday. It was a weird, weird, it's a weird kind of chart because it's not like, I mean, it pushed up. I think it's a little bit, it had a big move today. It may continue tomorrow. I don't know enough about it, but 450 is the key. Over 450, the party starts for MITT, but it's got to get over 450. Support down around 350 ish. Worst case scenario, 325 on that one. So, that's that. Um, what um, ITRM? 
ITRM, I, if it holds up at, at two bucks, I think it's okay, but it could come down. It has a gap down towards like 150, so it could come down a lot more. We have this this bullish cross right over the 50 SMA, over the 200. That's a bullish move, although many times that happens. When you see that happen, that's actually because there's a prior spike to get that to happen. So understand that, but we have seen clearly the momentum is to the upside now. So we're seeing a similar pattern setting up. Push up, push up, consolidate pullback. Now pushing up again, and we'll see if we get that consolidate pullback um, for right now. CDTX. CDTX sounds familiar. CDTX actually breaking out of this downtrend. Look at that. Beautiful breaking out of the downtrend, pushing up, kind of, you know, ups and downs. So buy, this thing on a, buy on a red day is solid. Resistance up around three bucks. So it's got to clear over three bucks now, and then it has more room to the upside for sure. Um, red flags. What red flags do I look for? So I look for, um, when it comes down to it, so I'll, when I'm looking for a swing trade, right, obviously if the price action is cracking below a key support, um, then if it hold, if it's cracking below and starts holding below, that's a red flag. Um, when it comes to looking at companies and red flags, I'll look, I'll use sites like tip ranks. There should be links down below for all these things that I use tip ranks. I'll use, um, Finviz and I'll use even seeking alpha and I'll dive deeper into kind of the financials of the company. Well, I would look, what you want to look for is you want to see that they have cash on hand. If a company you're looking at does not have much cash and has even an S3 on file, that's where you got to be careful. So for example, right, Sundial Growers, SMDL. Okay, let's go back to this guy. Here's an example of, I'm using BAM SEC. Um, SMDL recently filed an, an F3. F3 just means it's the same thing as an S3 just because they're in Canada. So if they have an F3 or an S3 on file and they're registering a shelf, they have the ability now to offer whenever they want. So as we speak, um, what is SMDL doing? Um, what are they up to? Actually, let's take a peek at SMDL. Um, 150 or so, it's not bad. But that's potentially a red flag. A company that doesn't have much cash on their balance sheet and a company that potentially is burning through cash, if you do a little more digging, is burning through cash pretty fast. That's where you're like, okay, you know, they may have some cash, but if they're burning through pretty quick, okay. They have an F3 on file or an S3 on file. Okay, they could do an offering. Those are some red flags right there to watch. And obviously, um, the chart. Many times, the chart will tell you beforehand what's going to happen. And and the way that I see that is, is, for example, DPW was one that I saw that, you know, weeks and months ago. DPW has a history of spiking, doing offerings, and the price drops back down. Spiking, offering, price falls back down. That's the history. So we know the same pattern potentially could repeat. So then what I'm doing is I'm making sure that for DPW, right, I'm, I'm looking to get in as low as I can. I was getting in here down around 160 or so, broke out of this downtrend, pushing up, boom, they had the spike and the stock came crash. Oh, it spiked up and it came crashing down, although still, still much higher than where it was at. So there's a, a lot of things that you kind of look at. But the offering kind of risk is, is one of those bigger things. Um, and just diving through a little bit of the company's history. If you can dive through and, and find out, hey, they got a lot of cash or a recent press release, for example, from DPW, like for, to, for a more reassuring press release. Now we'll see what happens, right? DPW could come out next week and do an offering and then like, okay, like they're kind of, you know, D-bags, right? Because look what happens. They come out here and say, hey, on, on the 10th, they report the best and strongest balance sheet in company history with $45 million in cash and securities. So what is that telling me? They got a good cash standing. It's the best in history. They're probably okay in terms of their cash for right now. So when you see that, that's usually a good sign. Um, and now a, 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 a red flag would be DPW, like the next day coming out and doing an offering. Like you just said you had a good balance sheet and then you did an offering to raise more cash so do you not have enough cash? What's going on? Are you burning through that cash too fast? Do you need it for something else? If they need it for an acquisition or for a, a purchase, that's one thing. That's what uh, CTRM has been doing. CTRM had been doing offerings, 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 offerings for so long. Go back from last year. Go to June through like December. The thing was like a hard, you did not want to be in that stock. But, but they raise a lot of cash and then look what they've been doing. They're going out and they're buying different vessels. Whether that's BS or not, whether that actually matters or not, I don't know enough about it, but they're using that cash. So people see that as, okay, that's positive. They're actually expanding. They're growing. They're expanding. 
Okay, so it depends how, how you're looking to use that cash, right? Um, oh yeah, so how do you know when they're not used up? What you gotta do is you go into the F3, right? And now what it'll tell you is, boom, right here. They filed for a billion dollar um, shelf. So then what you do is, that, okay, they filed this on, what is this? This is the 16th. Now, every offering from here, right, they'll tell you in the offering, this is according to the shelf registration filed on 216. So then, boom, you go to the offering. Now, let's say they pull they pull um, 100 million uh, on the next offering. Okay, they've used up one-tenth of that billion-dollar shelf, and you kind of have to keep track yourself. So that's kind of how, how you know you go about it. So... Yeah, could could someone could S, could uh, SNDL come out and 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 have a, a hundred million dollar offering next week? Yes, and then could they do that? They can do another hundred million dollar million dollar offering the next week. Yeah, they can keep doing that because they have a billion dollar shelf filed. So that's that. Um, that's that. I'm probably gonna wrap things up. We've been going up for a little bit here, so we're gonna wrap things up and let's see what do we got. Anything else to talk about before we close up? What is this? After hours, we still have RETO as the biggest mover. So probably chilling. Okay, it's pushing up again, actually. So it's it's doing this little kind of VWAP kind of bounce right now off of like two bucks support for RETO. That seems to be the only really significant mover right there. And then I guess TRMT is up 27%. So um, it, there's no way to say, okay, they have a good amount of cash. It, it depends. Um, it depends on the company size and depends on a lot of different things. So if you're talking about a company, right, that's has a, let's say, I don't know, let's say you're looking at a company like, for example, um, DPW, let's, let's pull it up on Finviz. So DPW, right, market cap of 169 million, okay? And I would compare it this way. So market cap here on DPW is 169 million. And then if you look at like SNDL, the market cap is 2.71 billion, right? So the size of the offering, right, and the size of the cash raise for SNDL, right, in comparison to DPW, it depends. So the way that I like to look at it is like, okay, if your float is 435 million shares, for example, for um, SNDL, and they were to do a public offering, right, and that offering was 300 million shares or 400 million shares, um, that's that's doubling the float. That's not good. That's really significant dilution in my eyes. Um, now, if DPW comes out, for example, uh, their stock price is trading at six bucks, and they do, um, a, you know, let's say that they do a million share offering, right? That would be a six million dollar, seven million dollar offering, right? That's not going to, uh, let's say it's a public offering, that's not going to dilute the float too much, and that's not that bad in terms of their market cap, right? What's six million bucks on that market cap? That's not that big of a cash raise. So that's kind of how I look at it. I look at you, look at the market cap, you look at, a, at that type of stuff, sales numbers. If they're pulling in or they're raising significantly large amounts of cash compared, relatively speaking, to some of these numbers, that could start to kind of throw some red flags um, on the company, at least looking looking to their past history. Um, and and let's, it, it, it's, it's all relative though. It's not going to be like, oh, there's one answer that fits everything though. Um, have a good night. We can appreciate it. I'm going to wrap things up here. So SOS, I think is solid as long as Bitcoin stays up. Um, fairly solid. Um, TRCH three bucks. If three bucks can't hold, I could see it coming out all the way to 225. So that's at least my take. So I'm going to wrap things up. Hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully there's some good questions answered here. If you guys are jumping in now, hit the thumbs up button. And if you want, there's, you, you can go back and throw the whole thing. So hopefully there's some good golden nuggets in there. I know it's kind of long, um, but Hopefully, hopefully that was some helpful stuff. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video. Was I green? Was I red this past week? We will dive into that tomorrow as well as the top stocks, top penny stocks I am watching into the next couple of weeks. So please, please make sure you are tuning in for that. If you're not subscribed, do so. And I will see you guys in tomorrow's video. Have a good weekend.